cloud performance engineering in DevOps. So this is Roshan. Uh, I'll be I'll be the instructor of this particular course, and I'll be leading you this demo and the course journey. I'll talk about the course in some time, and I'll before that. Uh, I would just like to introduce myself. So I'm having around 15 years of experience in IT, uh, predominantly working into performance engineering, uh, Java, Python uh, development, uh, into microservices as well uh, development. I'm a certified uh, cloud professional, multiple cloud, multiple cloud certifications I have, AWS, Azure, GCP. Uh, involved into automation, uh, various technologies, Java, Python, Terraform, Ansible, PL SQL, so self scripting, uh, all. And currently, I'm a principal SRE uh, and a principal performance engineer, DevOps professional with one of the, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a consulting work with uh, one of the prominent companies. And uh, teaching is one of my hobbies. Uh, I do like to share my knowledge. So here we are. Okay. So this is, going, this is going to be the agenda of our discussion. Um, I'm going to start with a question. Uh, I would like to know your opinion on that, and then we'll start with uh, some introduction about the software development and deployment evolution, how software has been developed and deployed over the period of time, over the history. And we'll, we'll, then we'll introduce about the course, uh, we'll set the expectation, and you can ask any questions you have. Uh, you should know, the idea is to, you should know about this course, how we're going to go about this course, and you can ask the questions. Okay, so uh, let me get started with the question first, and I would like everyone to attempt this question. Okay, uh, so if I ask uh, like this question, if performance engineers, right, we are performance testers, engineers, and I hope uh, most of us who have joined this forum are uh, from the performance background, performance domain. Uh, what do you, uh, do you think that these technology, these words that whatever I've listed here, uh, DevOps, uh, microservices, containers, cloud are somewhere nowadays from last couple of years are somehow getting related uh, to performance engineers. Uh, do you agree uh, with me on that? Or uh, or just I would like to know, understand your point on this uh, based on your work experience or what you're listening or working in your companies. Do you get to work in these technologies? Guys? Anyone can can unmute uh, your so you can unmute yourself or you can write in the chat whatever you feel like. Do you think that performance engineers are expected to know this? Yes, Roshan, we should know this. Right. Sojana Sojana has yes commented yes. Sirisha has put yes. Meghna has put yes. Right and absolutely. You got name please the person who unmuted uh, Megha has also unmuted, uh, has given yes. So absolutely, Ravindra, Swami, everyone, everyone, there, there is no doubt in this, because looking at the current trend that we are currently in this, we are in the transition phase in IT. Uh, we are talking about microservices now. We are not talking about monolith application. We're talking about microservices. We're talking about where do we host these microservices? We host microservices in containers. We're not talking about on-prem now. It's all about cloud. Everyone is going for cloud service providers. Could be AWS, Azure, GCP. And in, in all this, we need automation in place. And that's why we're talking about DevOps. Every, all these technologies and as part of performance engineer tester, uh, we need to contribute in this. We need to know, understand microservices. We need to do microservices testing using various tools, Geometer, I would say, uh, on top of my mind. And if you're having troubleshooting applications, your application microservices could be developed in Java or in other language. So you need to un uh, uh, troubleshoot your application as well, understand where is the bottleneck. And without cloud knowledge, without infrastructure knowledge, you very, very difficult because you need to architect also. The architect from a keeping performance in mind. So all these te te technologies, whichever I have mentioned here, is expected to know this performance engineers or in general anyone I would say, who whoever wants to be in IT, grow in IT, they all need to know this. And particularly performance engineers because we need to be everywhere, right? We need to understand the root cause, troubleshoot performance issues at any layer, whatever layer it could be. It could be infrastructure layer. It could be the application layer or it could be uh, somewhere the database layer it could be anywhere it could be at the network layer we have to be everywhere we need, we need to know about all this so 
absolutely as you guys mentioned yes we all need to know this uh going back in history okay let's go sometime back in history around 1980s and let's understand how the software were developed and deployed over the period of time so if if you look at uh back in 1980s uh, let me just start my point pointer so so if you look at back in 1980s uh, if you look at the development process we were all waterfall model and uh, mostly the application architecture were monolithic application right and what we used to do we used to mostly use big physical server and we used to inst install deploy a tiny little application we used to waste a lot of resources here and that time we don't have the concept of it we didn't have the concept of cloud we were using data center if you have a business idea if you want, if you want to have some software you don't have any other option you have to deploy your own data center you have to uh, set up your own data center then only you can uh, run your software application and deploy it that's how the things were quite difficult if you compare from now where we dealing with these technologies uh, back and the transition we are still most of you uh, most of us i would say are in this transition phase but i would definitely say that 30 40% of the it crowd has already been transitioned and they are into full fledged devops microservices containers and cloud technologies we are all working so after waterfall we went to agile right we all understand where the software development in the waterfall we developed the application at once and then we started a test and there was no looking back and if there any miss happening or if any decision has gone wrong in the architecture we, we cannot do anything about it so that was that difficult waterfall model but it was good to start with some something to start with so that we can improve on that so we improved on that we went to agile from waterfall to agile where we now we understood let's not develop everything all together let's develop in phases so we call different phases sprint 1 sprint 2 we did the phase we did the one phase development we tested it then we went to the customer client we asked for their feedback they got they, we got the feedback we improved on that we developed some other module and that that's how the software development went on and we are still in the phase of agile it's not like we we, we cannot say that we are not agile we are agile but we have improved on that uh, on, in in such a way that we are trying to automate every step now. the idea of devops here that as soon as the developer uh, completes writing its code and up it up and upload to a github let's say any central repository the idea is to everything all the process after that should get automatically triggered the code build using maven tool uh, or the it could the code would get deployed in the testing environment automatically deployment and then all your automation qa uh, scripts selenium scripts would get automatically triggered after that performance job jmeter job would get triggered and if when all the jobs are successful then only the code is allowed to deploy in production so that we are we are into we are talking about automation when we are talk about devops here uh we were using nt replication uh we still using nt replication where we use applic uh, web server application server db server right uh and then from vigical server we did a very wonderful thing around 2000 we uh, introduced we found something called virtualization very important thing now we were able to uh, utilize the resource better where uh, back in 1980s where we were just deploying one tiny little application to big physical server we were wasting a lot of resources we created the vms out of that physical server we virtualized the hardware we we install something called virtualization software and we, then we created vms multiple vms we created and then we could each in each of the vms we can run workload we can run application right uh, and that's how we were able to efficiently utilize the resource and there was some hosting there was there was some providers came who were trying to who we, you could have hosted your application there were some providers uh, around 2000 but if you look at the current situation now uh this virtualization uh we are trying to further break into down we are trying to further make sure that the one vm is completely utilized then only i am going with the another vm so what we are doing on top of one vm we are creating multiple containers so that 
let's say if your three tier application you needed three vms to run your workload let's say if your three tier application web server app server db server you needed three uh, let me just uh, draw this so let's say you used one vm for the web server one vm for the app server one vm for the db server so you needed three vms so what this containerization would enable you that in one vm itself one vm itself you can run three containers you can run these three containers in one vm itself and one container can run as your web server another container can run your app server another container can run your db server so I'm further the goal has been the same efficient utilization of the resource this phase was called virtualization and this phase is called containerization we are in this phase and that's where we're talking about kubernetes pods containers kubernetes is the container orchestration engine everything is gelling well together with containers because if we're talking about microservices where do we host the microservices we we don't talk about, about a multi application now we're talking about microservices and where do we host this microservices we host these microservices in containers and and to create containers what we need to do in a vm we install something called container engine like docker we install that like in the physical server when we needed to create the vms what we install virtualization software we install that and then we created vms in one vm i'm going to install something called container engine like docker and I, I can create multiple containers the goal has been the same efficient utilization of the resource if my one vm is completely utilized fully utilized then only i'm going to going to run my workload in the other vm that has been the goal right and we are in the phase of cloud now uh, we have got major cloud players in the market now aws azure gcp uh, we don't now. If you if you if you have an idea, uh, if, you, if you want to run your workload, it's not about setting up your own data center. You can just go to cloud, rent one server, two servers, three servers. You can just pay less than thousand dollars, and you can just run your workload, and you can have your application up and running. It depends on your workload and how many servers you have provisioned. That cost would depend on that, but you have you don't have to invest like a data center to run your workload if you have a business idea today we are in this that phase so learning cloud learning containers learning kubernetes learning um, uh, docker right uh, learning what are microservices how it is different from multi application learning devops is the indispensable part of current it transition now and if you are not in this phase, we are behind, right? This is what my understanding is. And that's why I have come up with this course, which is going to uh, enable the performance engineers to come and be in industry ready and be the, uh, whatever the expectation of the industry is, they can fulfill that and they can, they can grow their career, right? <clears throat> so any questions on this part? Before I move on to my next slide. I take that silence that we're all good. Uh, so coming to the course syllabus, right? Uh, this particular course, as I have been talking about, is designed is is I have made this course around all those four topics that we have discussed. Uh, to start with, uh, we're gonna learn about AWS. This particular course, AWS, because we have major cloud service providers, uh, others as well like Azure and GCP, but AWS by far has the largest market capture. 40%, 40% of the market capture. So we're gonna learn AWS and that's the first thing to get started with. And trust me, when I tell you that why we're learning AWS, you can ask why why can't we learn Azure and GCP? Uh, just mark my words. If you know one cloud service provider, it's so easy to learn other. It's so much easy to relate other cloud service provider be it Azure or GCP. So good to start with one cloud service provider and then I'm gonna talk about what all the relevant service. See, all the cloud service providers are very much similar. If you have worked in a, let's say, performance testing tools or a, let's say APM tools, if someone would say I have worked on App Dynamics, that person can also work in Dynatrace. He just needs to know the UI and how to pick things up, right? The concept wise remains the same. It has to capture the metrics. There has to be a metric. Right. So same thing goes for the cloud service provider as well. So you need to know one cloud service provider and you can learn others quite well. 
uh, I do understand uh, this 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 particular topic I have added from a lot of folks who have joined this course and they were very much there was very much a uh, low in Linux command line. Current we whatever we discussed today in microservices containers, it we all, all those things run in Linux operating system. And understand good understanding of Linux command line operating system is very much required uh, to troubleshoot any application to work on anything. So uh, I have a second module called Linux command line. I'm going to discuss about that. And then we're going to talk about different architectures that we have application architectures, month application, microservices, what are different, what are the differences, all those things we'll talk about that. And then we talk about where do we host these microservices? So we host these microservices on containers. So where, how do we create containers using container engine? So we're going to talk about container Docker now. Docker is one of the popular container engine out there in the market. Uh, your company, I'm not sure if, if you may be doing a POC around that, you're trying to break doing a POC around the container. Some of you would be doing that, I know. So we're going to use, uh, we're going to understand how this Docker work. How do we create containers from this container engine? We'll discuss about the, after that, we'll discuss about the container orchestration engine, Kubernetes. When we, when you have a lot of containers, how to orchestrate them, how to auto scale them, right? How to auto deploy them because Kubernetes, if, if a company is developed its architecture in microservices and they have a good workload to run, they are going to use Kubernetes today or tomorrow. They're going to use it. Kubernetes is the future today and Kubernetes from Google. From last 15 years, Google Google was using Kubernetes. They're still using it. And who handles load better than Google? I don't know from for, for anyone, but the better the, the 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 best company who handles load is Google. And they have been using Kubernetes. And the entire industry, IT industry, is relying on the Kubernetes, the Google, the experience, the maturity of this Kubernetes, what Google has brought in. All the companies, trust me, they're using Kubernetes one way or the other. Either you, they're using managed Kubernetes service, like from the cloud service providers, EKS, AKS, or GK. AWS has a managed Kubernetes uh, uh, engine, uh, service called EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service. We're going to talk about that. Uh, similarly, for Azure, we have AKS. And for GCP, we have GKE, Google Kubernetes Engine. A managed service because we're going to understand what is a managed service when we talk about cloud first and we're going to understand kubernetes in general as well it's an open source after that we're going to understand how performance engineering fits in devops what all different roles are there so that you are prepared uh, your industry prepared in understanding what is your expectation at the role what is the expectation at your job we'll understand that and we'll and we'll we'll end this with the continuous performance testing in devops how do you, because when you create a DevOps pipeline, CICD pipeline, performance job is going to be one of the tasks that a performance engineer or tester would, would be working in. Because they need to contribute. DevOps is at the organization level and you create automated jobs. So performance job is going to be one of the jobs, right? Uh, after you have built your application, right? Uh, you have you need to deploy the code in testing environment. Once you do that, the next job which which triggers is the you need to do the functional testing, right? So that is the automation QA job. After that, performance job gets triggered. The JMeter job gets triggered, right? And this is where we're going to talk about the continuous performance testing in CI/CD pipeline. So this particular course is based on these topics. We're going to uh, talk about these topics and it, this particular course is going to take around 40 hours. Uh, we're going to meet every day, one hour, 9 p.m. to 10 p.m. And that's how this particular, this is a vast course. A lot of, lot of things to be discussed. A lot of things, knowledge sharing is, has to be done and you need to learn, practice a lot. So that's about the course. Moving on. So uh, these are the different topics that we have, we're going to cover in cloud computing. Uh, so everything, whatever we're going to discuss, we're going to do it from scratch. I assume that my audience doesn't know anything about cloud, about Linux, about Docker, about Kubernetes, about DevOps. That's what my understanding is when I take up these subjects. 
you need to be in i you need to be from it that is what my expectation is because when i say some it word like port and ip you should be able to understand that this is what my understanding is right uh, and we're going to talk about from very basics uh, like going to talk about <clears throat> everything from scratch what is uh, cloud computing uh, cloud different service models that we have what is infrastructure service platform as service software as service uh, what is deployment model what is public cloud uh, uh, private cloud hybrid cloud community community cloud would you understand that we will, we will all have the aws account created uh, it's a free tier i'm going to guide you how to create your own, own aws account and we're going to practice things there everything i'm going to show you and you need to practice it right and we're going to talk about different a lot of aws services we're going to cover around 20 to 25 aws services here we're going to talk about AWS regions, AZs, IAM, one of the security services that AWS has. Uh, we're going to talk about different storage services that AWS has and the performance all from a performance point of view. Remember that. I'm going to talk each one of these topics from a performance point of view. When I talk about different storage services, I'm going to talk about what, how performance play a role, what you should consider from a performance point of view when you when you when you consider a storage service networking we're going to talk about that uh, very important to understand the architecture you need to know the networking and the most important of all the load balancing and auto scaling group for a very important for a performance engineer uh, the load balancing and auto scaling group how do you configure it right because we are in the wave in the we are in the cloud we need we want to auto scale things we don't want to scale up servers manually we want to auto scale up right uh, if you have a web server we want to auto scale up let's say today i have deployed four servers and let's say i'm able to handle 500 user load what if all of a sudden 200 200 more users came in do i have to scale up the servers manually no we are in the cloud we can set up auto scaling and once we do that, automatically the server should be scaled up based on certain criteria like CPU utilization. Automatically it will be scaled up and the load will be getting distributed across all the servers through the load balancer. So we'll understand that. We're going to understand the out of the box monitoring solution in cloud. Uh, we have a monitoring solution like you, you have uh, any uh, tools you have, you have heard of host monitoring. So in the cloud, we have a cloud watch, which is going to monitor all the services that you provision so we're going to talk about that so this is going to be uh the cloud uh, all the topics this this particular course only topic takes around 15 to 16 hours of our course part so around i would definitely say more than one third or 25 percent around one third of our course is in this cloud focus because i'm going to talk about cloud keeping performance in mind so that's 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 how we're going to take up things here Uh, again, Linux command line coming to this second topic. Uh, everything is from scratch. I assume my audience doesn't know anything. That's fine if you know a few of the Linux command, perfectly fine. But my uh, simple uh, mm -hmm. expectation is, or the, my target, my goal is to get you as comfortable with Linux as you are with Windows. If you know, see, it's only the, it's only about uh the knowing things it's all about commands right in linux if you know something in windows let's say if i ask you if you have a notepad and if you have a lot of text in that text in that notepad if i tell you how just give find me a word in that particular notepad you know how to do that open a notepad do a control f and find it but if i do if i ask you the same thing that if i have a file in linux do a control f in the linux will, will you be able to do that like how how much how many people have to do that and how much comfortable you are so we're gonna make you so th we will think from a windows point of view so if we can do this in windows why can we do this in linux it's just an operating system right so and it's all about knowing how to to know how to uh, uh, get this thing done right so that's how we're gonna take up things we're gonna learn about self scripting also, also. Uh, in let's say if you have uh, any monitoring tool in your company so you can make use of that to capture cpu memory disk but let's say you don't have any tool in your company 
can you still capture those CPU memory disk during the test time for the test duration? Because that's that's an important metric, right? That's going to be one of your data points to analyze where is the bottleneck. So we can make use of cell script and we can write something, something, and we can we can just uh, plot the graph of all the CPU memory disks. So we'll understand that as well. So we'll start from basics, and I will take you to the cell script technology as well in Linux command line. I'm not going to go over everything, but the idea is to do whatever you're doing in Linux in Windows, same thing in Linux. Look, let's say if you if you have to zip a file in Windows, you know that how to do a zip a file, right click zip. But how can you do the same thing in Linux? Can you do that? We have we have something called tar command. We'll we'll, ex, we'll understand that. So that's how it is gonna be uh, in Linux, right? We'll understand microservices architecture. What is Monf application? What is microservices, right? Uh, how it is different. Uh, first of all, we'll make the understanding clear, and then we'll talk about where do we host these microservices, and we host these microservices in containers, and how do we create containers using container engine? We'll talk about Docker, right? And we'll go over various operations that you perform in docker we'll talk about docker volumes we'll talk about docker file we'll talk about docker compose right? we'll talk about all these things here in this container engine and when you have a lot of containers you need to orchestrate them you need to auto scale auto deploy things like that so it should be done automatically right uh, for that we you need a container orchestration engine docker is the container engine and kubernetes is the container orchestration engine We'll, we'll learn about the container orchestration engine after that. We'll learn about this. Uh, one of the hot kick in the market, if you know, if you can tell you, if you, if you can tell anyone that you know Kubernetes, how would you auto scale things up? Uh, you, you're gonna have the upper hand in the interview for sure. Right, and we'll talk about uh, DevOps, how performance engineering fits in DevOps. Uh, what are different roles and responsibilities a DevOps, a performance engineer has in a DevOps complete life cycle? How can you contribute? What are different roles and responsibility you can be involved into a DevOps, particular as a part of performance engineering? Because the roles, the expectations are changing. Uh, in the current world, we are not just doing performance testing. Any two years, three years can guide do JMeter run, right? But ap ap apart from that, in a, if, in a DevOps ar architecture, if, you have, if you're having a DevOps, culture in cloud in Kubernetes setup, your roles and responsibility would be different. You know, to be knowing, you know, to be comfortable with these technologies to work and troubleshoot and make a, make a difference in, in your organization. And that's where this, all this technology that we have discussed, discussing would come handy, right? Uh, Kubernetes is one of the very important topics and we're gonna learn EKS, uh, Elastic Kubernetes Service. We're gonna talk about that. We're going to talk about the AWS offerings of Kubernetes. It's a managed service, Elastic Kubernetes service. We'll talk about that. How do we set up a Kubernetes cluster? We have a master and the cluster set up using EKS. We'll talk about that. How do you auto scale pods using HPA, horizontal pod auto scaler and cluster auto scaler? We'll talk about these two things as well most important thing and how do you monitor when you have lots of containers lots of pods how do you monitor them so we'll talk about cloudwatch container inside because monitoring is one of the very important uh, part that performance engineers are in, involved right so we're going to talk about that uh, cloudwatch container insights so this is what i wanted to cover guys uh, give you give you a brief about of the course and at last we're going to talk about performance testing in devops so when i talk about continuous performance testing in devops uh, i mean how do you create a performance job right how do you like we're going to use ci as jenkins as the ci tool and how would you make use of C, uh, jenkins as a ci tool to create a to create a cicd pipeline and when you create a cicd pipeline you need to contribute uh, while creating a jmeter job so we're gonna use create a JMeter job, and once the developer, the idea is once the developer, we're gonna we're gonna create this job. So the idea is when once the developer uploads the code to the GitHub, automatically the 
the course would get built and the course would get deployed in the testing environment. Once that is done, uh, an automation testing suit would run, right? That is fine, but we're going to focus on the, after that, there should be a job for the JMeter. Uh, based on the performance plugin that we installed using the JMeter, we will compare with the last build or uh, the performance SLA that we have on, our, on the response time or the, or the 95th percentile. And we're going to compare it. And then if, if the number looks good only, then only this, this job will be successful. And then only my code will be deployed to production. Right. So that's how we're going to create the CD pipeline. Uh, we're going to understand Jenkins, how do we install Jenkins? And then we'll talk about how do you set up, how do you trigger aut automatically email uh, when, once any job fails or passes? We're going to uh, do that, uh, scheduling the pipeline with dependencies. And how do you automate feedbacks using email notification? We'll talk about that. How do you create freestyle jobs? These are, these are all called jobs. Jobs are nothing but the tasks that you create, right? So we're gonna talk about all these things. Yeah. <clears throat> so that's all I wanted to cover, guys. I'm opening up for the questions. Uh, uh, this is what you're gonna learn by the end of this course, right? Uh, all the topics are covered from very scratch. Uh, that's what uh, this course USP is. And that's what I have understood uh, meeting all the people that that has to be the way because I do understand lots of people are not aware of these things. So that's how this course is designed from very scratch. Right. Mm -hmm. And you learn a lot of these things. Right. And I can share one link with you. Let me just share that link uh, so that just uh, this is the link right you can go over this link and you can contact uh, if you have looking to get more some questions you can ask questions right now uh, but you can contact mr. Kumar right you can contact mr. Kumar at this number uh, and this is the course detail. You're going to find all the details here. Some of some of my demo videos, you're mm -hmm. going to see that. And you're going to see all the details, whichever I have shared, what will I learn by the end of this course? Uh, and who can enroll for this course, right? Uh, in, anyone can in, enroll for this course. And all the course syllabus, right? And you're going to find all the feedbacks testimonials that I have been receiving over the period of time, all the uh, real WhatsApp images I have shared. So let me let me share this link with you guys and I'm opening for the questions if you have any questions. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. So, uh, the course seems to be very vast so how much duration uh, you require to cover all the topics uh, yeah that's a what good. is the plan and when are we finishing this right so as i mentioned uh, it's going to be 40 hours okay 40 hours and but uh, but i have scheduled i have planned in such a way that over the weekend uh, i can i'll be giving you uh, some self paced material as well if you we want to cover it quick right but the entire, but that's that's gonna be my self-paced videos, okay? Uh, from this course only, right? Mm -hmm. Not not any not any other source. But if this course in general, it takes around forty to forty-five hours, right? So this, this that's the course duration. Yeah. Let me just okay, okay. So what, what I understand is that we also have self-paced videos in case if we have any urgent requirement, we can also go through during the weekends, right? Exactly. Otherwise, we can follow the course. Okay. So second thing, as you are doing very detailed in the AWS as well. So uh, with this knowledge, uh, we will be able to cover any of the certifications uh, from exactly. AWS. Exactly. So after this particular course, we're going to lay a very strong foundation of AWS and you can definitely go for cloud practitioner and solution architect, but you, you will have to groom yourself and I, I can I can guide you on that. But I cannot promise you that this, go, this course is going to get you the certification, but you need to, so for sure, I would say the 50% of the work will be done from this course by this AWS, whatever we are targeting. And 50% you need to practice and I can guide you for that. 
Okay, okay, sounds great, uh, Roshan. Thanks. Sure. So, are the these concepts here like admin part or so only they're related to the performance engineering area? So right. how we are going to cover See, uh, the the time that we have devoted for AWS Cloud is sixteen to seventeen hours, right? So if I say that I'm covering everything, it will be very wrong, right? AWS is a very vast around 200 plus services. So my focus is to get you as comfortable which you require in an industry from a performance tester in, or to get started, to get you started in, in AWS and which is very much good enough, right? So no one, let me just log into this AWS. So no one has known 200 plus services. Mostly people knows about 40 to 50 plus, 50, for 30 to 40 services in detail, right? That's how the industry, this, this is what the expectation is. And even if, even if you ask experts, no one can tell you that I know all the 200 plus services, right? So it's all about 30 to 40 services and how well you understand that makes a difference. So we're going to talk about that. And definitely, uh, you can, as I mentioned, 50% uh, of the course syllabus from the architect point of view, we're going to cover that. And 50%, I'm going to guide you how to get things done. So there are around 200 plus services in, in, in AWS and it's still, still growing, right? So that's how it is. Roshan, I have another question. Sure. So, uh, in the CI/CD pipeline job, like we right. are using like what is that uh, pipeline method? So, are we covering any scripting part here? See, scripting part, I'm going to talk about, see, my main focus is not to talk about CI/CD pipeline as such. My main focus is to create JMeter jobs. See, mm -hmm. look at this, we, uh, because uh, the, the the understanding should be here. I'm not talking about DevOps and all the CI/CD pipeline here. My main focus is to build how to build a JMeter job, right? So that a performance engineer or tester joining any company and and, uh, and it being expected to uh, contribute in the CI/CD pipeline, that person should be comfortable. So this is what my expectation is uh, in the CI/CD pipeline. I'm going to talk about the the job performance job. Which and I'm gonna talk about thoroughly how to create, uh, how to install Jenkins, and how do you create uh, uh, the, the performance job using JMeter job. I'm gonna talk about how do you set up email notifications. Uh, we're gonna do so the scripting script part. So if, for, to run the JMeter, you need to run one command, right? That in the non-GUI mode. We're gonna talk about that. And to build again, to build the website, you need to run some Docker command. That script part that we're covering but not but don't expect a devops kind of experience right because that is not designed here yeah but i hope i answered the question roshan sarisha this side so when you're talking about ci cd pipelines and you're entirely concentrating on jmeter uh, and do you think we need to have jmeter experience in it to understand it well or is it fine if we have load runner experience <laughs> If even if you have a load runner experience, you can also create a load runner job in the CSD pipeline. And I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to talk about JMeter as such. I'm going to just talk about how do you create JMeter job. I'm going to tell you how to run JMeter in non job. That's all. Very simple. It's, 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 it's going to be very simple. Thing. Can you go to uh, It's very loud background voice. Can you go on mute, please? Thank you, Sirius. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now I have one question. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So I'm working on a, a, a the project here. Yeah. Which is related to AWS yeah. cloud-based uh, project. So which they have given the a, um, AWS workspace. So which is covering this uh, which is one of the service in AWS or the... Yeah. Tell me, yeah. I'm I'm talking about the AWS workspace. Is I'm, listening. Kind of I'm, I'm listening. Yeah, I'm listening. Yeah. Ah, so he's one of the services in AWS with a separate topic, which is not covered in our syllabus. Correct. Correct. Right. So AWS workspaces, it is it is some one of the features to create your own desktop, right? So yeah, yes. we are not covering this particular part, right? So workspaces. So as I mentioned, we're gonna talk about in general topics, right? So around 20 to 25 topics, services we're gonna cover. We're gonna talk about EC2, we're gonna talk about VPC, we're gonna talk about IAM, we're gonna talk about 
cloud formation we're going to talk about eks we're going to talk about these things right so billing like those things we're going to talk about these things more right uh, different security services different uh, storage services that we have ebs efs s3 we're going to talk about these things right so yeah but i, I can just tell you how to get get started on that if, if you are looking for me in information on this but we are not covering as such for this particular topic yeah yeah okay for my project they have given the workspace and in that part they have built the application in the workspace okay just practicing the application access in general and we thought right. providing they are in production in the building production so they have given the basic access uh with a small configuration of they have provided this aws works this workspace to practice the Right, it is, it is not related to, it is just about the, the getting the desktop experience in the cloud, right? So you can get started yeah. and you can just create your desktop, you can have your quick setup or advanced setup, you can launch workspaces. So yeah, I understand what you're going, but we are not covering as such in this course, but it is, if you're looking for any more information, I can, I can help you with that. Okay, okay. Uh, hi, Rush. Yeah. Roshan. So, when is this course uh, ab about to begin? And, okay, so uh, it's the first first demonstration that uh, we are into, right? Uh, we're just going to introduce this. So, today is our demo session. I'm going to start this course. I think from tomorrow it's going to continue. So, if if you are already in the WhatsApp group, you'll be notified. So, we are we are we started, right? So, today you can consider like a first demo session, and we're going to start with the real uh, topics. You can tomorrow and you can attend some demos right and then you can decide what do you whether do you think it's gonna add value addition for you or not so yeah we're gonna start we have so we can start it that this particular topic and from tomorrow it's, it's gonna be the topic that we're gonna talk about more yeah. okay okay so megna has asked me a question uh virtualization is same as containerization no megna uh, virtualization is not same as containerization. So when I say virtualization, when you say you basically virtualizing the hardware or the of the physical server, and then you are creating content, uh, you are creating VMs. So what you have to install something called virtualization software, right? Uh, like VMware or you have VirtualBox. These kind of software you have. You, you have to install in the physical server and then when once you install that you can create vms in the same physical server i hope you're working in vms but when you create containers when you want to create containers you take one vm and you install something called container engine like docker and then you can create containers so virtualization virtualizes the hardware but the containerization container it virtualizes the operating system so when you create multiple containers right in one vm you don't need separate separate operating system but in the case of virtualization when you create vms you need separate separate operating system for vms this is why we virtualize the operating system in for the con containers and that's why you don't need separate separate operating system for the containers right so that's the basic difference i hope i answered your question Megan. Uh, yes yes russian thank you sure uh, hi, Roshan. Yeah, uh, yeah. What are study materials we are going to get at the, uh, as a part of this course? All right. So let me show you one drive. Uh, so everyone uh, would be getting. So these are all my batches, which you see here, different, different batches, which I have been taking up. Uh, August. So let me just show you one of the latest uh, batches. So you're going to get all the PPTs, uh, which I'm, I'll be going over these sessions. For cloud computing, Linux, container engine, container orchestration engine, Jenkins, you're gonna talk. I'm gonna give give you some cell scripts. I'm gonna give you some YAMLs to work on Kubernetes. I'm gonna give you some uh, user data. Uh, some so the all the important links which you which you, which which you require just to have a better understanding of cloud and the performance knowledge. I'm gonna give you this. Uh, all these things I'm gonna uh, give you everyone. I'm gonna add you here. Like I have been adding, uh, like most of like if I just open any any other course, let's say if I'm opening this particular, so I have been adding. So for every batch, I'm gonna create something like this drive. I'm gonna add people here, 
so if, let's say for this august batch i would be i, I would have added around 50 people so I, I would be adding something like that so you'll be getting all these access and along with that you'll be getting the recorded session as well absolutely right? absolutely lifetime yes okay Yeah, any more questions I can answer? Uh, just a random question again. Yeah, yeah, yeah please, okay. please go ahead. Yeah, yeah uh, so you know, the recorded session along with the PPTs would be sufficient to uh, clear the interviews uh, for cloud performance engineering. Exactly, right? So yeah, you should be, the idea is to, you should know the knowledge, right? And I'm gonna give you the knowledge, right? So those recorded sessions are the real, day-to-day -day class recordings so yes you're gonna get you're gonna clear it yes absolutely you're gonna get all the knowledge so do you have any doubt after going over all these things you will you will not be able to clear it absolutely you're gonna practice it along with me and once you gain knowledge absolutely in these topics you will always have an upper hand and it's a practical course right like uh, you will do something and along with that uh, we'll also uh, try and do something from our end exactly but not during the session i may not have that time luxury we don't have that one hour so i will be doing it it's a complete hands-on training it's a complete hands-on you're going to watch me do and you're going to practice it the same thing later okay thanks I have a question. Like, uh, yeah absolutely go ahead so what is the course uh, uh, timings like okay it's it's gonna be it's gonna be eight to nine uh, sorry nine pm to ten pm daily uh, nine pm same time as you are meeting right now nine pm to ten pm on the weekdays uh, Monday to Friday uh, we can decide on any one day we can take leave also we can meet four days a week uh, that's fine but it's gonna be on the weekdays Monday to Friday nine pm to ten pm IST Indian Standard Time. So if you're in a different time zone, you can convert that. Yeah. We don't have any sessions on weekends, right? Weekends, no. Do we but get any course completion certificate for this after the session? Right, right, right. The ESA training solution provides that. Uh, yes, course completion certificate. Yes. So, so you're gonna go. I want. I would. I would highly. Uh, request or recommend that this particular link go over this link and you will have all your most of your doubts clear yes so yeah, this course company certificate and all the uh, feedbacks that people have been giving all the whatsapp uh, they have attached this uh, is there any solutions so yeah you can go over this and there are some demos videos also uh, you can go over them with a better understanding how do i go about taking any subject right so you will get some fair idea about that as well do we get separate certification for each topic or the club no no just no. one no no one only one for the course yeah because that was containing only devops so which one it's a this course cloud performance engineering in devops for the entire course. Okay. Yeah. Someone else wanted to ask something. Yeah, Roshan, I have one uh, question. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, while uh, while working on the Docker's and container, so are you covering that scripting part also? Like, if we want to do any scripting for microservices or uh, in Docker or container. Uh, so what are the parameters we should consider or what are the challenge uh, we may face uh, during the scripting part or so during execution that also you cover or? that is that is completely into devops okay what you what you're asking right now this completely into devops part right what where i come into picture to help performance engineers talk to devops professionals better so i'm going to tell you how do you create containers how do you go inside the container? How do you see files, file system inside the container? And if you want to edit something, if you know what parameter to change, you can change it, right? So you can write a cell script for that. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna talk about how do you create 
uh, an image using docker file I'm, I'm not sure about exact expectations you have it here because i'm going to tell you how do you create containers i'm going to use docker compose docker compose uh, to create uh, docker volumes commands all the all the commands docker operations command i'm going to talk about that different commands that you have common docker operations how do you create docker uh, if if if, if, if I have to just show you that particular slide, what all I am covering here, let me just uh, go over that uh, container engine, what I'm going to cover. Let me just allow me a moment, it's loading up. So first of all, I'm gonna get you comfortable with Docker and making I'm making an understanding of docker how virtualization and containerization different and talking about so different docker operations that you have i'm going to talk about all these commands so that you understand how you create containers how do you work with containers how do you log in inside the container how do you do a port mapping i'm going to talk about how do you use docker file to create your images i'm going to talk about different uh, your docker volumes what is the concept of docker volumes i'm going to talk about the administrative part of docker docker compose when you have a docker compose you have you can create multiple containers at the same time if you have a docker compose file uh, like for example if you have this docker compose file if i run this how to run this if i run this you're going to create db and your uh, work wordpress website all together then I'm going to talk about the administrative part from performance point of view. How do you check on logs? That is more important. How do you look into the system? Uh, all those and how do, how do you look at the stats, the CPU utilization, the memory memory utilization from a performance point of view, right? Those part. I, I hope I, I answered your question. What are you looking for? Yes, sir. Like mostly, uh, like uh, you will be covering how to use Docker and container. Uh, like I, I was supposed to ask, uh, like if we want to, uh, like if we want to do any performance uh, for an application which is hosted on, uh, like let's suppose Docker. Mm -hmm. uh, so during the scripting part, uh, like it will be helpful or not? Like exactly. how we can cover. So you, the Docker stats. You, what do you doing load test? What do you need? You need to need know the stats, right? So for these containers how much is the memory footprint cpu footprint you you would like to know that right so docker stats is what you're going to have yes yes so docker stats you can write a self script around docker stats to get you all the metrics that you're looking for and the docker logs i'm going to tell you show you how do you use make of these commands for the administrator and the monitoring purpose i'm going to show you that okay thanks sure Any more questions? I have four minutes, guys. Okay, I take the silence that we are all good. So thank you so much, guys, for attending the session. I hope you learned something today and hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks, Roshan. Thanks, sure. everyone.